In these molecules, we are looking at three charged clouds. We are counting a bond as a charged cloud, and we are also counting a lone pair as a charged cloud. So, in these molecules, the dark grey is carbon, the white is hydrogen, the red is oxygen, the yellow is sulfur, and that green lobe is your lone pair. Here we are looking at the molecule formaldehyde, or also called methanol. So we have a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen, and single bonds between the carbon and the hydrogens. But when we count our charge clouds, that double bond we just count as one charge cloud. So in total we have three charge clouds here. In this molecule we don't have any lone pairs, so our electronic geometry is trigonal planar as well as our molecular geometry so which is also trigonal planar in the middle and on the right hand side we are looking at sulfur dioxide in the middle one we are showing the lone p and on the right hand side we are not showing the lone p so we are still counting the double bond as one charged cloud. So we have two charged clouds coming from our sulfur oxygen bonds and one charged cloud coming from the lone pair. So in total we have three charged clouds. So our electronic structure is therefore trigonal planar. But now when it comes to the molecular geometry, we cannot see the lone pair and therefore our molecular geometry is bent or V-shaped. So when we determine the molecular geometry, we first look at the electronic geometry. And then from there, we deduce the molecular geometry. So those lone pairs, even though they are not visible in your molecular geometry, they are influencing your molecular geometry. And therefore, we have to start off by getting the electronic geometry. And then from that, we deduce our molecular geometry to get the correct geometry. If the lone pair wasn't present, we would have said the molecular geometry is linear. But now that lone pair is influencing your molecular geometry and therefore it is bent or V-shaped.